Hello everybody! It feels like I just did a book haul very recently, and I did, but then I bought so many more books in April. So this is my April 2018 book haul. April was an unusual month for me, book buying wise. I would not have bought this many books, but I was on vacation and I got to go to two different independent bookstores, one of which was absolutely amazing. So of course I dropped a lot of money there. <laughs> Um, and I wish I could go back. Um, so that is a bit out of the ordinary for me, but I also have acquired some other things that I had pre-ordered or gotten through more um, book swap sites and things like that. So let's get into it. The first one is John Scalzi's Head On, which came out in mid-April, so it is out now. And this copy tour the publisher sent me, I was going to take it with me on vacation to read it close to the publication date, and I completely forgot. It was in a stack of books in another room when I was packing, and that's why I didn't even mention it in my vacation TBR before I left. But I do hope to get to this one very soon. It's gonna be a short, quick, and really fun read, I think. And I talked about what it's about in one of my anticipated releases video for this year, which I will link because I'm not going to repeat myself all over again. And then I have four books that I also mentioned in my vacation TBR video before I went on vacation because I kind of sort of unboxed them there, but I will try to go into a bit more detail this time. Uh, basically, I ordered three books from Small Beer Press because I love them, and then they sent me a fourth book for free, which looks really interesting. So I bought two short story collections and a novel. The first story collection is The People in the Castle by Joan Aiken. It is Selected Strange Stories. And this is part of what it says on the back. A whisper in the night. A dog whose love is greater than death. A doctor who visits a haunted castle to deliver a cordial to a mysterious patient. Here are tales of the uncanny and the supernatural. The creak upstairs, the half-remembered conversation that won't let you sleep, the room full of leaves that will amuse, delight, and raise the hair on the back of your neck. So yeah, it's a bunch of kind of suspenseful tales like that. As you may know, I'm not into scary stories, but I don't believe this is outright horror. I've read one story from this, which was reprinted on Tor.com, and I really enjoyed it. So I think that these are just gonna be solid short stories that are a bit on the slightly scary side. I probably won't read them late at night, but I don't think they're gonna really terrify me either. The other story collection is Ambiguity Machines and Other Stories by Vandana Singh. I have read some of her short fiction already, some reprints and stuff, but not a lot to really know much about her style. This one I bought just because it's a new release and I really love the cover art on it. I love the color scheme. So this is what it says here. A book of stories about the uncertainty with which we move through space and time by ourselves and with others. In her first North American collection, Vandana Singh's deep humanism and scientific background intersect in stories that celebrate characters who are trying to make sense of the people they meet, what they see, and the challenges they face in this world and others. Science fictional short stories, I'll take it. I think I'm gonna really enjoy this. The novel I got is The Invisible Valley by Su Wei, which is translated into English by Austin Warner. This one I gave a really terrible sort of summary of it when I talked about it the first time, so we'll actually read more of the description this time. Um, Liu Beiping is one of 20 million young adults the Chinese government uproots and sends away for agricultural re-education. Bored and exhausted, Liu pines for romance, but instead finds himself married off to the foreman's long-dead daughter so that her soul may rest. Then the foreman exiles him up on Mud Kettle Mountain on cattle duty. On the mountain, Lou meets an outcast polyamorous family of woodcutters led by a matriarch and one of her lovers. The family have their own idiosyncratic faith by which they claim to placate the serpent demon sleeping within the mountains. Just as Lou's bosses get wind of Lou's secret life, a typhoon rips through the valley and deep in the jungle a giant serpent may be stirring which sounds very interesting, not what I usually crave to read, 
but the slight fantastic or supernatural element and just the historical period that this is set in, it's going to be very interesting to read. So I hope to get to this one pretty soon. And then the bonus book that Small Beer Press sent me is Three Messages and a Warning, Contemporary Mexican Short Stories of the Fantastic, which is edited by Eduardo Jimenez Mayo and Chris N. Brown with an introduction by Bruce Sterling. So this contains 34 all original Mexican science fiction and fantasy stories, many from authors whose work has never been published in English. And that's what I noticed when I looked at the table of contents that I didn't recognize any of the names in this collection at all, which is pretty exciting. Um, so there are ghost stories, supernatural folk tales, alien incursions, and apocalyptic narratives, as well as chronicles of highly unusual mental states in which the borders of fantasy and reality reach unprecedented levels of ambiguity. And more along those lines. I'd never heard of it before, but now I'm very intrigued, and hopefully I will find some authors in here that I really enjoy. And now on to the books that I acquired when I was on vacation. I went to two bookstores, and the first one was Malaprop's Bookstore in Asheville, North Carolina. I was in the Carolinas, and I can never remember which side of the state line I was on when I was in various places. Um, so I had never heard of Malaprop's Bookstore, but we were like right next to it, so we went into it. And it turns out it's like a really famous indie bookstore, like one of the more well-known ones in the United States. So that was an amazing find. I could have walked out with the entire science fiction and fantasy section and other sections of the bookstore. Just talk about an amazing selection of books. I did limit myself to only three books, probably because I didn't actually make it through the entire bookstore. We had to leave. I could have spent an entire day in there. So I really just whizzed through the SFF section and then I ended up in the translated works shelves as well, which was great because I found a book there that I really wanted. So I first picked up Binti the Night Masquerade by Nnedi Okorafor. I've already read this. I read it as an arc and I talked about it in a weekly wrap up at some point and I wanted just to have a physical copy so I have the entire Binti trilogy physically now. I'll probably reread the whole trilogy at some point because I think that's the best way to experience the story. I've been reading it in small bits as it's been published. Um, so I really loved this when I read it and it made me really appreciate the middle book a lot more as well. And then my impulse purchase was The Moon and the Other by John Kessel. I really haven't heard anybody talk about this other than maybe the hosts of the Cood Street podcast. I know it's popped up at like in Locust Magazine a few times, but on the whole, I don't know anything about John Kessel. He's been around for a long time, and I had no idea that this was a science fiction novel. There is no um, real description on the back of this for some reason. I don't know why there's not a description, probably because it's paperback. Um, but I read the first part of the first chapter and thought, this, this is an SF story. I should probably try this. <laughs> so I got it and we'll see what I think of it. I'll try to talk about it relatively soon. I wish I could tell you what it's about, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the moon and people living on the moon and other things like that. And then, like I said, I somehow ended up right by the Works in Translation bookshelves at Malaprops, so I made a beeline for this book, which is the Complete Cosmic Comics by Italo Calvino. I think the majority of this is translated by William Weaver. Uh, William Weaver, Martin McLaughlin, and Tim Parks. Um, so. I read a small selection of the Cosmic Comics stories back in university, and I really didn't know what to make of them at the time. Um, it's, it's not really science fiction. It is almost like a mythological literary ode to science in some ways. I would kind of describe it as mythological science fiction, actually, much more in a literary tradition than in what you might recognize as the SF tradition. But Ever since I got rid of my copy of that little book, I have regretted it. It's one of the few books I regret getting rid of, so I've had my eye out for the complete collection of all 34 of the Cosmic Comics tales. Um, and it was on my mind because a couple of days prior to me finding this, Yamini from The Skeptical Reader had commented and said, you really should buy this and tell me what you think. So I did, and yes, I am currently reading it. I am still rereading a couple of stories at the beginning that I remember from university, and they're really good. They're a lot better than what I remember, probably because I am a much better reader than I used to be, let's say. 
So that was a really great find. And then a couple of days later, I was in Greenville, South Carolina, meeting up with my friend Tara. It was the first time we ever got to meet in person. And of course, we met at the bookstore and we were at Fiction Addiction in Greenville. And I got more things, of course. So I grabbed Intergalactic PS3 by Madeline Langle. This edition, which is new, they just brought it out in 2018, is very heavily illustrated by Hope Larson, who is the artist who did the graphic novel version of A Wrinkle in Time. I have read it. I think it actually won a Hugo Award. I think. Um, so I was really happy to see her artwork in this. I think it's really, really great and really suits the story and everything. So this is a short story that kind of takes place between A Wrinkle in Time and the second book in the series called A Wind in the Door. I tried to be a bit objective about it and just read it as a as a standalone that's not connected to anything else. And I'd say it's a, it's a perfectly decent short story. The message is good and everything. But if you're trying to interpret it in terms of the entire term, time quintet, it, it, there's something kind of weird going on there. But anyway, as just a little standalone that's illustrated and stuff, it's cute and I would recommend it for kids, definitely. And then I also grabbed Lumberjanes Bonus Tracks, which is written and illustrated by a bunch of different people. Um, this is a collection of one-shot bonus stories that were published from like 2015 to 2017 in the Lumberjanes series. I didn't even know they existed. I just saw this in the children's section and grabbed it. <laughs> and they were cute and very Lumberjanes types of stories. They didn't completely blow me away, but I thought the writing in them was consistently very good. It definitely kept the the feel of Lumberjanes, which is really important to me. I wasn't as keen on some of the artwork. They all have different artists, and there were a couple that I just wasn't um, really, really into. Um, and, you know, artwork is subjective, so it doesn't matter very much, but I'm glad I picked it up. I've noticed that a lot of stories seem to focus on Ripley, who is one of the more outgoing and crazy one of this group of girls, but my favorite character is Joe, and it just seems to me like very few of the stories ever actually center on her. There have been a lot of story arcs about other characters, but not her for quite a while, and I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I think Ripley is just a bit too easy to use too much for a lot of these stories, even though I like her. Then I went to the poetry section and I grabbed A Life on Mars by Tracy K. Smith. I don't read a lot of poetry, and there's a reason for that. I'm not very good at appreciating poetry yet, but this is kind of a science-themed poetry collection that I've had my eye on for a very long time, and when I actually found a copy, I figured it was fate and I should buy it. So I did. I have read it. I thought it was good, but what I mainly learned was I really need a poetry education regimen to learn more of Essentially, what are the tools that poets have that they can use to build poems? I feel like I need to know something more about what poetry actually is and how it can be constructed before I can even begin to appreciate what certain poets do, especially for modern poets, let's say. So I thought it was okay, and I'm definitely going to keep this copy because I want to reread it after I have learned a bit more about poetry and I can come back and have a bit more of an um, a, an easier time interpreting it, I guess. Not easier. Um, I just want to be more educated so that I understand what's going on in it. But um, this is, like I said, kind of themed around science. I feel like a lot of it was kind of an ode to Smith's father because he was a, an engineer who worked on the Hubble telescope. And I feel like her relationship with him, the science and space aspect, and then um, there's a lengthy piece about his death as well that really seems to define this collection as a whole, and I actually really appreciated that connection. I, I got that. I got the content or the topics there, let's say. So it will be much more rewarding when I can read it properly next time. For some reason, with all of that, I qualified for a free book at Fiction Addiction, so I grabbed a copy of the very, very shiny Jane Unlimited by Kristen Cashore. This is a young adult novel, it's a fantasy novel, and is one of my anticipated releases of 2017. Fun fact, I've been trying to read this book ever since it came out. I've checked it out from the library two, maybe three times, and I've never actually read it for 
different reasons, all of them legitimate. Uh, but now I own a copy, so it will eventually happen. I mean, it would have happened anyway, but maybe sooner now. <laughs> so this is actually an ARC. Um, the bookstore had an ARC cart, so they couldn't sell them, so they would give them away as free books. And I've never actually seen that in a bookstore before. It was pretty interesting. And then I came home and I had books waiting for me in the mail. The most exciting one is Before Mars by Emma Newman. No, I haven't read it yet. I just got it yesterday and I thought I would start reading it right away, but I had a couple of other things to finish up. But this is so high on my priority list, guys. Um, I talked about it more in my anticipated releases video, so I will link that. But basically, it's another book set in the Planetfall universe, and I adore these science fiction novels by Newman. I know it's gonna be amazing, and I've already heard really stellar things about it, so yay. Um, and then I got my copy of Thrice the Branded Cat Hath Mewed by Alan Bradley. Not too much to say about this one. It is the eighth book in the Flavia de Luce mystery series, which is about a 12-year-old girl in 1950s England who loves um, chemistry and poisons and investigates murders <laughs> and has a grand old time doing it. I love this series very much. Um, I've read this book well over a year ago and I collect the whole series in paperback and after I read the ninth book which just came out, I realized I'd forgotten to buy a copy of it, so I did because it was cheap on Amazon. Um, the next one is Rack by James Bradley. I don't know much about this book. After I read Clade by this author, somebody commented and was talking about Rack and it sounded very different from what I would usually read, but I wanted to try more by Bradley. So I stuck this on a wish list on a book swap site and I got a copy. Magically, it's great when that happens. Usually nothing on my wish list ever appears anywhere, but I got lucky this time. Um, so I really don't know what this is about. It's another one that doesn't have a description on the back. It's just blurbs and stuff. Um, but I think it's maybe something of an experimental novel. Who knows, maybe kind of postmodern, but apparently it's actually taught in some Australian schools. I'm gonna give it a shot. And then I also got a copy of The Exile Waiting by Vonda N. McIntyre. I've really loved the two books that I've read by her before, um, Dream Snake and The Moon and the Sun. One is science fiction, the other is fantasy set at the court of Louis XIV in Versailles. Um, they were both really great and really different. Um, for some reason, The Exile Waiting made it onto my list. I think this might have been one of the McIntyre books that Ursula Le Guin mentioned really liking, which would be a very good reason for me to stick it on a wish list, but a copy was available and I got it. And um, what does it say on here? It's more blurbs. Oh, here we go. Here's the description at the very beginning of the book. Misha possessed extraordinary telepathic and sensitive powers which forever linked her to the mental calls of her family. But never being able to escape your family, how terrible. Oh yes, <laughs> they controlled her very existence and forced her into a life of crime to support them. Family's awful. When the pseudo-sibs, twin aliens from another world, landed and took over most of the ruling power, Misha saw her chance to escape the tyranny of her relatives and of Earth. Misha wanted them to teach her to fly spaceships. She was positive she could do it. But first, Misha must convince those biological wonders of her tremendous capabilities and of her willingness to serve them. Okay, so a woman with ESP convinces aliens to teach her how to fly spaceships. That is not what I thought this book would be about, but I will report back on how good it is. <laughs> And there's one more book which I have saved for last on purpose because it is the book from the spring 2018 book bath box. And with the chance that maybe you're watching this and you have that box and you haven't opened it up yet, I don't wanna ruin the surprise for you, but I'm gonna mention it here so you can stop watching right about now if you want to. And that book is Creatures of Will and Temper by Molly Tanzer, which appears to be very inspired by the picture of Dorian Gray, except the main characters are sisters rather than being men. And I'm really looking forward to reading this one now. Those are all the books that I acquired in April. I don't think I'm expecting any more for a little while. I'm going to try to cool it with the book buying because at a certain point it's like I'm acquiring them so quickly that I can't read them in a timely fashion and that makes me sad. I don't want to be in that position. But anyway, if you have read any of these, if you have them and you're excited about them too, do let me know your thoughts and if you think I should prioritize some of them and read them right now because I will try to do that. So thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you again soon and until then,
Bye.